Hello and welcome back to my basement. This is Jeremiah Wolf, and uh, I passed the CCIE, <laughs> the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure. Uh, today is July 26th. It's a Wednesday, and on Monday, the 24th of July, 2023. I passed the CCIE. This has literally been a goal of mine for over 20 years. I was first introduced to the CCIE. Uh, I was a struggling, poor computer tech. Um, and this would have been like 1998. And I saw a job posting uh, for a CCIE that was offering more money and more perks that than I had ever heard of uh, growing up in a small post-industrial little town in Northeast Ohio uh, here in the United States. So when I saw that, I had never heard of certification. Uh, it changed my life. That job posting completely transformed my life. And from that moment, uh, the CCIE was a goal. I never, I never got to, to even attempt it though, until just these past couple years where circumstances allowed for me to actually pursue this and, uh, and make a real attempt. And Monday was my second attempt at this exam, uh, my first attempt being just over a month ago, it, uh, almost exactly on June 21st, I think, 20th, something like that was my first attempt. July 24th was my second attempt, so almost exactly one month apart. Um, I, f I failed the first one. I have a video about that. Feel free to watch it. I passed this one. So I just want to, I want to go over the experience. What was different for the second time, uh, how I managed to pass on the second time and a few more tips, um, that I kind of was able to put together while doing this. And I want to share with you, uh, I thought this would be fun and I had time to do it only because I had time. I actually... Uh, managed to roughly, roughly count the number of lines of <laughs> syntax that I had to type in during my exam. And I'm going to give you that number. Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> but so let's talk about the exam. So first off, I got to say um, this experience, the second time, completely different experience. Like completely different experience it's crazy now i'm i'm kind of like i i have a little bit of like anxiety about certain things um i don't necessarily like uh new situations it's hard to describe because some situ like some things don't bother me at all uh other things really bother me and it's it's not a very clear distinction as to what is and what isn't um but Having done this and gone through this and seen everything one time, it's really hard to describe how much less stress and anxiety I was feeling. It was drastically different. I mean, and it was all just little things, but like it was weird because I'd only been, you know, here a month ago. And um, so, but it, it just like the building felt familiar. Like I knew where to park. When I walked in, last time I went to walk into the door and like it was magnetically locked. So I'm like jiggling the door, looking for what am I supposed to do? This time I walk up, I grab the door handle, wave to the receptionist. She buzzes me in, I walk right in, I hand her my, like I just knew everything to what to do. I knew where the room was, I knew where the restroom was. I knew that it was going to be cold in there, so I dressed appropriately. Um, this time I knew that the mouse was a mess and people thankfully told me where to adjust the mouse settings. And so it was the very first thing I did was adjust the mouse settings, but I'm getting ahead of myself. But, um, so yeah, it was just, it was a wholly different experience. I don't want to say it was fun. It wasn't fun. It was still very stressful. And there was a couple times during the exam where I caught myself getting in my head and I just, I, like, I started making mistakes, and I, and I was just like, okay, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Look at the clock. We're doing okay. Deep breath. All right, get back to it. One thing at a time. And um, that really, really helped. 
the first time I took it, I was just like, even though I knew, I knew cognitively, like, okay, you got to take your time, you got to be what, but you still got to be fast. This time I was just like, just do one thing, do the next thing. I knew what to expect. So like, I, I kind of had a rough, you know, I had a feel for how much time I was going to need. And, um, yeah, so it went a lot better. So anyway, let's just go through it. So, um, I had the exact same proctor as last time, if possible, <laughs> If possible, he actually spoke even less this time, uh, which was kind of funny. It's I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to shit on the dude. He he really seemed like he he would much rather be doing something else than than babysitting the CCIE uh, test takers. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I can't say that you know he wasn't he wasn't like a jerk or anything. There was no interaction whatsoever. So he he was nice, I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Like he literally said, follow me, put your backpack there, there's your table, there's the car key for the bathroom, we're beginning the exam, type in your CCO number, which is printed out for you, by the way, at your, sitting, it's already sitting at your, your desk, your uh, C, CCO, whatever it's called, CSCO number. Um, okay, now he did say something, I don't, tr- I don't know if he said this last time, one thing I wanted to do... Um, one thing I, I had wanted to do was to get, uh, Genie all set up. So what I wanted was I wanted a file for every single task in the exam so that I could keep all my configs separate. I could keep them. So if something wasn't working, I could go back and see what I did, maybe find a mistake, without having, excuse me, to comb through the, uh, the running config on the device or do a bunch of show commands. That was my intent. But he explicitly told us, um, do not open the text editor during the design portion of the exam. Uh, I'm sure he said that the first time and I just didn't register it, but this time very clearly do not do that. As I said, um, so I knew that I had lots of time. So the, the design portion is three hours. Last time... It only took me an hour. And I think some of the questions are, are hard enough that I, I think it's almost as if they expect that you're going to be digging through documentation. Again, I've been told you can do that. I still don't know how to access it. I've taken the exam twice. That's If I have one, one bit of frustration, there's two things that really frustrate me about the exam. One is the, the mouse was garbage absolute garbage and that's just not acceptable like it's sixteen hundred dollars for the exam buy a fucking twenty dollar mouse like the dollar 99 mouse come on guy seriously like just get a decent mouse um you know it, it was serviceable but it was frustrating the second thing was there's no real like no one walks you through like okay this like Here's, here's what you, you know, how to access stuff that here's like the fact that you can adjust the mouse settings. You just have to know that going in and the way that the interface looks, it's like you're in a stripped down version of, I guess it's Firefox, but when you just look at it, or maybe it's Chrome, I think it's Chrome. When you just look at it, it almost looks like a custom interface. So I was afraid the first time I took the exam, I was afraid to minimize things or close things. I I don't want to. You know, I've heard horror stories about logging out of the exam on accident, and that's it. You're done. So um, I didn't want to touch anything. Now, second time around, a lot of guys contacted me after my last video. said, dude, the mouse thing is right on the desktop. Go ahead and do it. You can access the documentation. Um, I'm still not sure how to access the documentation. I guess you just open a web browser. I didn't do it. But the fact that they give you three hours for the design portion seems to imply that they expect you are going to be using the documentation. So, oh, by the way, this is, um, it's cream soda, soda. It's not beer, not alcohol. Um, I don't, I don't consume alcohol. Uh, this stuff is really good though. It's made with honey. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so I went through the design portion. I had, I'm pretty sure the exact same questions as I had last time. I don't know how often they update the questions. I had the same ones, thank God, um, because I spent a lot of time trying to remember what I came across and trying to research 
what the right answers might be, uh, which is very difficult because of everything you're doing that day. And you have the design portion. Then you have the full five-hour do portion. So being able to remember those questions uh, was rough. Luckily, if you scour through the internet, you'll find, come across conversations that might you know, jar your memory. Like, oh yeah, there was something about that. Um, and I, I did rely on that a bit uh, to try to um, figure out what in the design to do. So, I th oh, this is the other thing. When you fail, they give you a breakdown of like the four or five domains and then you up, uh, just a percentage. It's not particularly helpful, but at least you know like in Software Defined, I got this score in, uh, you know, connect whatever, I don't know. Um, when you pass, nothing, <laughs> just pass. So I have no idea, no idea what I might have gotten right, what I might have got wrong. I don't know if I did really well or if I just barely squeaked by. And that was the other thing. Um, there was no like pass. I guess you pass both. You have to pass both. So there's no point in telling you because like you can you can get a pass pass fail where you pass the design, pass the do, and yet still fail. Like that is a possibility in, based on how they score the exam. Um, but yeah, when you pass, you just get a thing that just says pass. There's nothing else. Congratulations. Here's your number. You passed. Um, okay. I'm kind of all over the place. So that was the design. I really don't have a whole lot of tips for the design. Oh, there was one one thing I, I did want to point out for the design. There was one question that I was expecting. I did get it. I got it the first time around. And um, I realized that I had not answered part of it. I just didn't answer part of it. I There was something where the answer was like, no, nothing needed. And I left it blank because nothing was needed. But that there was actually an option, nothing needed, or whatever it was, no, conf I don't know, whatever it was. And so the first time around, I left that fucking blank. Um, so I, I, I don't know how they graded it. I don't think you get, you get partial credit. I don't know. But this time I took my time. Now that I knew, I knew I had so much time in the design portion. This was this was one of the big things, was going into design, because you have all this stuff to read, and, and the questions, like, a lot of them are complex, and they're Cisco questions, so it's like, what? What do you mean by that? Um, there was one thing <laughs> that that got me last time about uh, uh, MPLS, and I, I don't want to be specific, because, you know, I don't want to, you know, uh, get in trouble, but... And I, I very specifically remember the question because I was like, like I, I, anyway, whatever. I remembered the question and I did a ton of research on that. And thankfully, just recently, like just the, like a few days before I finally came across the actual answer, because I kept seeing a lot, there's tons of articles about one answer, but it was incomplete. And thankfully... I got the whole picture because I kept, I just kept looking because I just wasn't satisfied with what I was seeing. I finally came across the right answer and I actually lapped it up. Uh, so that was helpful. But anyway, but so there was, there was one question, this one where the, with the, where the one answer was like, no, no, nothing. Um, the part of the answer was in one of the, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the exhibits, the resources, from a previous question. So when you hit next, that's it. No going back. You cannot see that question again. But you still can uh, maintain access to all of the emails and diagrams. And so every time you go to a new question, I think with every single question, there's at least one new resource. Usually it's an email. Most of them are emails. Uh, a lot of them, there's a lot of them also have diagrams. There was a couple chat uh, interactions, mostly though emails. And uh, it's, it's fun. It's an, it's an interesting concept. And I, I like, I like how it's done. I like it because the question the question will often be like, based on the requirements, what's the, the right answer? So the que you can't answer the question without going through and reading the email because you don't know what the requirements are. They're not in the question. They're in the, the exhibits, the resources. Well, there's one question. The answer was actually in the resources that it was an email or something from a couple 
couple questions before. So um, that that was because I was like, huh, man, I don't know. Like it could be a couple different things. So I I'm like, but didn't they mention something? So I went back and sure enough, boom, it was right there. So that was one of the things that was really cool. One, two, two things that were really cool in the design section. One, uh, they this isn't not a lot, but there was a couple places where as if you have read all the resources, they basically gave you the answer. Two, and this is pretty cool, if you read all the resources, look at the diagrams, take your time with the questions, they're literally setting you up for what you need to do in the do section. Now, that can be dangerous because they, there are some things in the design that do not carry over. In fact, most of it does not carry over. But there were a few things where I feel like in the design, in the do section, I, I might not have known exactly what to do, even if it was somewhere in my brain, but they cued me up in the design section. They kind of like, hey, remember this technology? Hint, hint. And then you get to the do section, it's like accomplish this task, and you're like, oh. I can accomplish that task by doing this. Ba -la -la -la. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's pretty much for the design. I finished the design this time in uh, 45 minutes. So um, I don't want to say too much, but uh, that, was a, that was a steady pace, but at no point did I feel rushed. Now, when you finish the design... So I had, at this point, excuse me, I had two hours and 15 minutes left in the design portion. But the moment that you say you're done, you start the do portion. There's no intermediary. There's no break. So if you stop design, so what did I do? I left the clock running. I went and took a piss. I came back. I stretched for a minute and just kind of, you know, calmed and centered myself took a drink of water, and then ended the design section. I had tons of time left in design, and you can't carry any of that time over. So I literally, if I wanted to, I could have, I could have closed my eyes and took a, a two-hour nap if I wanted to. Um, luckily, that's the other thing. This time, because I, there just wasn't as much anxiety, I slept fine the night before, as good as I sleep at any hotel. Um, and that made a huge difference, just being reasonably rested oh my gosh I just I felt fine the first time I took the exam I had a headache I just felt terrible the whole time because I was just I hadn't slept and this time none of that so that that made a huge difference um so moving on to the the do portion it was like I said it was the exact same as the last time thank god um I did my best in over the past month to to uh, lab up everything I could remember, research little things that maybe I had gotten wrong, and constantly try to find ways of doing things faster, just little ways of doing things faster. Um, one of the things that helped me a lot was, was adjusting the mouse. That Just adjusting the mouse to the point where I was more accurate with the mouse versus the first time made a huge difference. It probably shaved five or even 10 minutes. I'm not exaggerating off of my total time because I wasn't constantly retrying to, to copy. Co oh God, come on, come on, co oh God, click it. God, what'd you do? Just, ugh. just no, no. Pro I did have a couple problems with copying and pasting because the mouse wasn't perfect, but it was, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I also, in the interim over the past month, I did sign up and do another one of the Cisco online labs just so I could get more familiar with their interface. And particularly, I wanted to practice copying and pasting. What I found doing that was that while control V does not work to paste into the devices, control shift V does. So that saved me some time. So I would control, I would highlight over in my text editor, control C, go over to the device window, control shift V. So I had been practicing that at home, so it was natural. 
that saved me a lot of time versus right clicking and pasting and moving the mouse all around. And maybe it didn't save that much time. I don't know. But I felt it just felt more natural than using the mouse, you know. Um, what else? Oh, so I wanted to show you this. So what I had been doing at at home is like I, I, I practice creating different um, files for each of the tasks. So my goal was to have a separate file. What I wanted to do before I started typing anything was to have a task 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, blah, 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 each in its own file. So I could just click, 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 and if I needed to go back and whatever. On, on the exam, I couldn't do that. It wouldn't let me do it. It wouldn't let me save my untitled document. Now, the, now here, if I hit new, nothing, nothing. But on the exam, if you hit new, you won't get a new file, but you will get a new tab. I don't know, whatever. So I, I discovered that very early on, um, thankfully. And so I had multiple tabs open across the top. They were all t all untitled, so it was a little bit of a mess, but not. It wasn't too too bad. There's not so many tasks that it would get completely you know un unmanageable, but that was a big thing. That it's just helpful to be able to go back if you need to. Ultimately, I really didn't have to. I didn't really need to go back, but it was nice to know that it was there if I did. Um, speaking of being able to go back, another big time saver that I ended up not needing, but someone told me about after. So on the first exam, I ran into a problem in vManage. I, I built out my template. I applied the, the templates to the device template. I, uh, you know, pushed the device template out and I had to put in all the variables. I had to fill in all the variables in the template before I sent it out to the device, right? It fails. I don't know why it failed, but it did. So what did I have to do? I had to go back, apply the individual templates back to the device template, then fill in all the variables again, and then push it back out. And it wasted me so much time. But what I did this time, it was very different, was after I filled out all the variables, you can download that file. And because you're doing this on one of the virtual machines and not on your uh, test environment, you can save files there. So uh, every time I filled out a template where I was requiring to put in lots of uh, variables, I would download and save that just in case it didn't work and I was going to do it again. I could then just reapply that text file. It would fill in everything for me and I could look to see maybe I, maybe I typed in something wrong or whatever. Um, so that was that. The other big time saver, this was a huge time saver for the software, uh, for the vManage stuff, was I did not wait for my tasks to complete successfully. First time around, I would, you know, push it out to the device or devices, and I would wait. And you, you, you'd end up doing like, I don't know, 10 pushes, and each one you're waiting 30 seconds or a minute so that adds up, you know, when you're, when every second counts, that adds up. So what I started doing, excuse me, so what I started doing was I would just, uh, I forget what the, what is the, what is the command? I don't know, submit maybe. I hit that and then I would just move on to the next thing right away and then when I had a free minute, I would go back and look in the little task icon and you could see everything was successful. If it wasn't, I could try it over again. I didn't have to do that. Everything worked fine this time. So, uh, yeah, that was that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other like tips. So that, those are my big tips was like, uh, do, what do we say? One one tab for every task so that if you need to, you can go back for the couple of seconds it takes to, to queue that up could potentially save you minutes later on. I did have one issue. 
I don't remember what it was. I had one issue where I had screwed something up and it wasn't working. And luckily I did, I looked, I just say, I, you know, I'm like, okay, why is this not working? Okay. It's probably related to this task. Let's go back to that task. Uh, I don't know. It's a route map. I don't know. Oh, I re I named it wrong. I named it wrong. Fuck right there. Quick save, quick fix. Like, so I wasted maybe two minutes. Um, could I have done it just as fast going to the device and doing show commands and looking? Maybe, maybe just as fast, probably just a little bit longer. So I think um, I'm happy I did that. That was the big thing, one tab per task. And um, and then the other thing was um, the don't wait for the jobs to finish in vManage before moving on to the next step. Just move on. If you did it right, it's going to work. And if you did it wrong, you're going to have to redo it all anyway. So you don't really lose a whole lot of time. Um, so that's that. Now, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, okay. So, so, so that was the exam experience, right? That's the exam experience. I ended up last time, first time through, ran out of time. I used every single second and there was at least one task, maybe two tasks that I didn't even touch. I think there was two. One I forgot. I just forgot that it was there. I actually could have done it because it was a pretty quick task, um, but I just for I forgot about it. I just for I just somehow skipped it. I don't know. Don't know. Um, this time I had over an hour left over an hour and I was done. I went back. I loaded up every single device. I did it uh, site by site. There's multiple sites within the topology site by site. I loaded up every device, save the config. I did a few show commands at various points in the network just to make sure that the routes were, sh I thought they should be to make sure that things were working the way they should be. I did a couple of tests for the basic, I don't want to say too much, did a couple of tests of some basic stuff. You know, everything was working. I saved all the configs. I still have an hour, an hour. And I'm just like, what should I do? Like, I'm just, I'm terrified that I'm going to hit end and realize I forgot something. So I went back through all the tasks and made sure that I had, you know, I'd done, I'd done them all. I was afraid I'd miss something. Like, there's just there's too much time. Um, but no, I had done everything. So, uh, yeah, so I just, whew, okay, click, you're done. The weird thing about the, the thing is, like, when you finish, it immediately takes you to the login screen. And I thought it was, like, asking me to confirm that I was finishing. So it was, like, I because I was expecting something like that. Are you really, really sure? Like, this is it. Are you sure? Um, so when it popped up and said like, enter your, your Cisco ID number, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like they want me to, uh, to verify a hundred percent that, you know, it's like on some programs when you delete this, like, please type delete in all capitals to confirm, you know, something like that. So I'm like, oh, what is my, I start typing it in and then I realized, no, it just takes you right back to the login screen. And I was like, oh shit. I, so I don't know, like, could you get in trouble if you tried to log back in? I don't know, but luckily I didn't do it. So. Okay, so I, I end the exam. I'm done. It's uh, right around 2 in the afternoon. And uh, I'm like, oh, boy, now the waiting starts. Now, last time I got my results at about 1030 at night. And I'm like, okay, I really hope that it's earlier than that. Because here's, here's, what, here's what's going through my head. If the test went so well, that if I failed, I, I, got, I got nowhere else to go. I, like, the first time when I failed, I was like, okay, whew, I was not prepared. I need to study this, 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 and this. I need to lab this, 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 and this. I need to get better at this. I need to get faster at this. I got two months worth of work, and I had a month to do it. This time, when I left, I was like, I felt like I knew what I was doing. So if I failed, what was I supposed to study? 
what was I supposed to get better at? So all night as I'm waiting, checking my phone, like every 15 minutes, checking my phone, checking my phone, checking my phone. I'm just like, oh God, if I fail, like this is it, the whole thing's over. Like, what do I do? There's nowhere to go. There's no more training. There's no, like, I don't know what my deficiency is. If I failed, I'm done because I am so inept that I can't even tell what I don't know. Like, that's what I was, I was, I was so, I was all in my head. I was sick to my stomach. 1030 comes and goes. 1130 comes and goes. I'm trying to fall asleep. 1230, 130. I'm just lying there. I doze off for a few minutes, dreaming about the test. Wake up. Oh my God. Check my phone. 230, 330 AM, 430, 530 AM. An hour before I had to get up anyway to go to the airport. Boom. The email comes in. Passed. It was a rough night. And then I'm completely exhausted and now I got to fly. And so uh, yesterday was rough too because I was just so tired. So yeah, that was my, um, that was the experience. Now, (laughs) pause the video and put in the comment below how many lines of code, syntax, whatever you want to call it, did I have to put in for the exam? Now, listen. So, what I so if you're not aware, uh, where's that? <coughs> ba-da, 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 ba-da. So, Genie keeps track of your lines. So, I had a tab for every one of the tasks. Come on. There we go. Um, now, Obviously, all of the software-defined stuff, um, or most of that, you're doing point and click. So I didn't, I couldn't capture all of that. Um, But uh, all right, did you put it in? Here we go. So the rough total, just kind of rough. This is a rough total. Roughly twelve (laughs) hundred. Twelve one. 1,200, not, not words, not letters, lines, 1,200 lines that I had to put in. Now, let's be fair. A lot of that, I would type up a block, copy it, paste it, edit specific elements of it, okay? So I didn't type in every single one of those characters a goodly portion of them were copy and paste. A goodly portion of them I would copy right out of the running config, paste in the text editor, and then modify uh, parameters. So again, but still, I mean, come on. <laughs> 1,200. And this is, this is, excuse me, I'm getting all animated and my, uh, my soda is coming back up. Uh, yeah, so that was a, that was a lot. It's a lot. Um, people have said that this is a week, week's worth of work, that you literally have five hours to do. I concur with that as someone who has you know, been in networking for many, many years. I would never do this amount of work in one week. Never. Now, part of that is because in the, in the real world, you are testing things, you're submitting change requests, you're uh, labbing things up. So, you know, you go into meetings, you're doing all this. So there's so much other work involved. You don't just sit down as fast as you can. But um, that's what this was. So there it is. That is my experience for my second exam. Now, coming up, I'm going to make a video about how much this cost me, what tools I used, what study material, I'm going to make reviews about the different uh, providers that I have worked with. Um, I got lots of videos coming out over the next few days, couple of weeks. We'll see how it goes. I, uh, and, oh, and uh, in case you're, you're curious, what's next? I've passed the CCIA. What's next? Well, um, more certs. 
always more certs. It never ends. It never ends. It never ends. Um, partly because that's who I am and partly because that's what the job demands. So I'm going to take a couple of days ish off. I got a ton of work to do around the house. Like this mess behind me is just one of the many, many projects I need to get done around here. Things that have just fallen to the wayside while I was focused on the CCIE. I got to get all this stuff done. Stuff, stuff needs fixed, stuff needs cleaned. And, um, back to studying and uh hopefully you know finding a new job uh that's uh, also top of the list top of priority so all right well anyway i uh, hope you found this uh, helpful and i'll see you in the next one